Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on Pig City Hockey. Today we're going to be talking about one of the more interesting cases and storylines of the Winnipeg Jets 2020-2021 NHL season, and that is NHL rookie defenseman Logan Stanley. And I want to talk about Logan Stanley because I think he's earned it. Because I've made videos on Logan Stanley in the past, uh, criticizing him. I've talked about prospect update videos where I put him, you know, up high and low at times. Having him everywhere in my rankings of our just overall prospects. Not, you know, being the highest believer in him a few years ago, when even last year alone. And I think it's time I give the guy some credit because he's drawing a lot of attention to himself. And there's been a lot of debate and conversation about Logan Stanley. Not because he's been some amazing, spectacular player for the Winnipeg Jets. But because a lot of fans want to see us protect him over Dylan LaMelo. Thinking he's got more potential and all. All that jazz and I want to kind of talk about Logan Stanley a little bit about the whole Dylan DeMello side of things and why I think keeping him might be a smart choice but then again it's a very hard situation I find myself in right now because I love Logan Stanley I love Dylan DeMello and you can stay till the end of the video to find out what my thoughts are about Logan Stanley and how the Jets should approach keeping him in his future in the NHL and his future with the Winnipeg Jets organization and with all that being said make sure to subscribe before we get any further into this video turn on the notifications if you haven't already make sure to follow all my socials down in the description below also make sure to go subscribe to my co-host of the Prairie Puck Podcast, Hot Garbage Sports, and Nolan Hockey Podcast. Both those guys run amazing hockey channels where you can get all different types of news coverage, game updates, game reactions, and whatnot around the NHL from all teams, including the Winnipeg Jets. I really, really appreciate it if you could go subscribe to them. And on that matter of the Prairie Puck Podcast, make sure to go and follow the Prairie Puck Podcast on Spotify or whatever the music listening app that your device platform, whatever that you want to call it, that you use to listen to music or podcasts on. We're also on YouTube on all three of our channels, so make sure to subscribe to make notifications, and you can see those episodes come out every Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Central. And with all that being said, let's jump into today's video, and I want to talk more importantly, just jumping to the back that I owe an apology to Logan Stanley, because at this point in Logan Stanley's career, I wanted to just trade him, I wanted him to, uh, you know, I thought he was an AHL guy for the rest of his career, maybe a call-up once in a while, I did not see him developing, and it wasn't because I thought he was some crap defenseman that was a failed bust, I just didn't see his defensive game improving enough to be worthy of him getting an NHL spot this offseason, compared to guys like Vili Hainola, and even Sammy Niku, who in my opinion has been a completely forgotten shadow of the Winnipeg Jets organization this last season, but when you look at Logan Stanley this year, you look at his advanced stats, there's nothing spectacular about the guy and I'm being completely real he had some good games he had some bad games he had some great shifts he had some horrible shifts but the thing that I think stands out the most about Logan Stanley and his rookie season is his first ever playoff of performance and a playoff of performance in the NHL against the Edmonton Oilers and against the Montreal Canadiens in the second round in eight games playing all eight games with the Winnipeg Jets in the playoffs he was able to put up three points, and not only was he able to put up three points, two of them goals, two of them being go two goals scored within three minutes in an elimination game in game four in the second round as a rookie defenseman, one of the only guys to show up in that game with absolute heart as a unit and trying to win it for his club. And that's why he's warranted my respect and kind of started to convince me that maybe keeping him in some way somehow might not be a bad way for the Jets to do, especially when you look at the face of their blue line and the potential of what it will look like in the makeup in the future with all the prospects like Billy Hinola, Dylan Sam. Declan Chisholm, guys already like here with Josh Morris and Neil Pinock. We have a ton of guys within the system right now, and it's a very interesting makeup because you got a lot of prospects. You've got some good core pieces there that aren't, you know, all stars, but good guys to build a core around. And uh, excuse me, in, in Morrissey and Pionk. So when you have guys like that, you have the prospects, and then you have Logan Stanley, a prospect slash rookie guy who's already been on the team now, is kind of a wild card because when let's be real, not a lot of Jets fans saw Logan Stanley making this jump this season. Last year with the Manitoba Moose, in 44 games played, he was only able to put up 10 points, which was his lowest point total by half almost compared to where he is at second season, his first year as a rookie in the AHL, playing 73 games, being able to put up 22 points. So I do understand that it is 44 games, which is a lot less games played, almost half when you it so. That is a big difference on half the points being there. I get that. But I didn't think that his, his play was any much better because in less games, he was a minus 17. And I know the plus minus stat is broken, but it's a good way to still get an idea of how a guy can play defense and his makeup on the ice and whether or not he's responsible or if goals are scored against him a lot on the ice, regardless of it's his fault or not. And a lot of goals were scored on the ice when Logan Stanley was there. And that's been something that has happened a lot. His defensive side of the game has improved, obviously, in the NHL this year, but there were a lot of times and a lot of skints where he did not look like he was very NHL caliber at that time defensively and offensively he's always looked good in my opinion because he's always been able to generate shots and what surprises me the most this year before we get into talking more about his shot opportunity his offense is his defense this year in the NHL a plus 13 
Now, you could argue, and I like to argue, that the only reason he even has a plus 13 this year is because he played on a sheltered third-pairing role for most of the season with defenseman Dylan Lamello, one of the best defensive defensemen in the entirety of the NHL. So obviously playing a guy like that, playing only 10 to 11 minutes a game for most of the season, it's going to help boost you up defensively. But I think also, in a, given all the credibility of the way the defense looked and how Paul Maurice and Huddy and everyone managed that, even though I have my very, very public complaints with them, I think you, the way they used him it was kind of smart because you gave him a, you know, a, a role where it wasn't too hard for him to fail and just to kind of test him out and see where it goes. And especially giving him time to grow and get used to that NHL games. 37 games played this year, that's very good for a guy like Logan Stanley. That's almost as many games as you played in the A last year. You played pretty consistently at times as well, so it was good to have him jump in, even though we had a guy like Jordy Ben come in, who realistically, Paul Maurice could have easily made Jordy Ben our full-time starter defensively if he wanted to over Logan Stanley, because that's how Paul Maurice works when it comes to vet presence, and just how he looks and makes up the defense in the past. But he gave Logan Stanley a shot, he played in 37 games, and I think it warranted him a pretty good success and a pretty decent season all around when you look at, not maybe consistency, but overall growth at times in the game. And although Logan Stanley, as I'm talking about all this growth he had this year and how good he was. I still don't think keeping him going forward next season, if you have to expose him, I think that's the right right decision. And I only say that because Dylan Lamello still has a good amount of time left on his contract. He's got two more years left on this deal. Or maybe it's three. I think it's three. I actually can't remember. Point being... It is three more years on the deal, ladies and gentlemen. I had to double check that. But point being, if you have a guy who is one of the best defensive defensemen, who has obviously made your team immensely better when you look at the defensive side of the game this season, if you take out Dylan DeMello from this season, I don't think the Jets really, I think the Jets are probably where the Habs were. If not, they could have been lower when you look at how bad their defense was at times. And Dylan DeMello really was a rock star for us. Maybe he doesn't put up the points and that can be like, oh, he doesn't put up points, he doesn't blah, blah, blah. But defensively, you need a guy like that to stay home. I always compare this to look at the Ottawa Senators with Mark Mathieu and Eric Carlson. That was one of the most dominant pairings we'd seen in a very long time in the league. The moment that got broken up, what happened with Eric Carlson in Ottawa and that whole team crumbled defensively? And I'm not saying Mark Mathot was this amazing goat for the Ottawa Senators, but there's been other cases of this in the past where removing the defensive guy from your core, an already weak-ish core defensively, could be immense issues for you and bring immense issues for you in the future. So I think killing, keeping Dylan DeMello is the right choice. And honest to God, guys, the more and more I look at the expansion draft, the more I look between Mason Appleton, Logan Stanley, Dylan DeMello, who gets caught, exposed, Andrew Kopp, and all this other jazz that's been floating around now with the Adam Lowry contract being signed earlier this year, I think personally I'm leaning more towards keeping DeMello and keeping Stanley. If you're going to have to make a deal somehow, maybe if you get, not even giving up a first round pick, because let's be real, if you have to encourage Seattle to pick Appleton over Stanley, in all seriousness, I think they do that without any encouragement. I think Appleton has a lot more to bring to his career than what Logan Stanley does right now, and I think Logan Stanley is more of a prospect. And I don't think that even though you know Seattle is like, oh, let's not. I don't think they're expecting to be Vegas all of a sudden and have a cup run all in their first year, but they're gonna want prospects too. So where they go, who they pick, I have no idea. But personally, as it still stands, regardless of how good Logan Stanley was this year for the Winnipeg Jets as a rookie, where his improvement came and whatnot. I still think the smart decision for the Jets in the future and for winning right now is keeping Dylan DeMello. If you keep Dylan DeMello, you can give Dylan DeMello a good role with Ville Hinola next year. You want Ville Hinola to become a more consistent guy for you, but you don't want to play him in the top floor because you still don't think he has that size and experience yet, Paul. You get play him with DeMello, you do the exact same thing you did with Logan Stanley, and then you give Logan Stanley a more increased role and see how he gives him an opportunity with that. Worst case scenario, Vili Hinola does struggles a bit and Logan Stanley struggles with more time. You drop out Vili Hinola if you really have to, or you drop out with everyone's playing better or worse. It doesn't matter because you're Paul Maurice. And then you play them with Dylan DeMello in more of a sheltered role and give them respect. Dylan DeMello is the perfect type of guy to break in NHL defensemen with because he's so reliable and he can help make up mistakes for the guys when they're on the ice and when they're playing offense or making doing anything really and that's responsible uh, that's responsible hockey and that's exactly what Dylan DeMello brings and I think that's why the Jets need to consider keeping him even though I love Logan Stanley and even though he had a great year and had improvement and deserves to be keep, to, uh, to keep playing in the NHL I'm being real when I say that after the story he's went the, the media talk about him including from me the fan standpoint even Moose people, Moose diehard fans, did not see this guy becoming a NHL regular for the Jets. Yet, for him to come out and play 37 games with a very loaded defensive prospects like Hanola, who was expected to be already on this roster, but he wasn't because you just had that much, you know, readiness from Logan Stanley and he had that good of a camp in Paul's eyes, I think he deserves to stay with the team. 
But if you have to pick between a guy like Logan Stanley, who is still, you know, 50-50 that he comes into anything in his career, or he just stays where he is, or gets a little bit better, we still don't know. Or a guy like Dylan Lamello, where you know exactly what he is. He's a defensive guy who is reliable, who wants to be here, who is under contract, who fits in great with his club and identity. I think you have to make the smart decision and keep DeMello. It has nothing to do with me hating Logan Stanley because I really do like the kid. And he has shown me that I can be a complete idiot at times. And I'm really glad for that because I love when I'm proven wrong by a guy. And Logan Stanley proved me wrong and a lot of other haters wrong when it comes to his development. But when you have to compare it to winning now and winning a cup, which has to be this organization's uh, goal right now in that Connor Hellebuck window with his three years left on his contract, Dylan DeMello is the better player right now than what Logan Stanley will be within that three years in my opinion. I think Logan Stanley still needs time. I don't think he's going to be the next Chara, but I do think he's going to have a good career. If that being said, if the Jets need to find a way to keep him, do it. I won't be upset. But there has to be something done to be able to keep Dylan DeMello protected. Dylan DeMello is the safer bet, and he's the better player right now for us to win, regardless of what Logan Stanley is going to bring. So if the Jets want to win now, go for it now, in my opinion, and I think that's what they should be doing. But with all that being said, we'll see what happens, because Logan Stanley had a great year. He deserves to be with this club, but Dylan DeMello is just that slightly better player, and I think he deserves to be protected more than Logan Stanley, even though Logan Stanley has a great development year, and he's on the right track with his progress in becoming a consistent NHL defenseman, and a pretty damn good one at that as well. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Peg City Hockey. Make sure to subscribe, turn on all notifications, follow me on social, subscribe to the Prairie Puck Podcast, or I guess that's just subscribing to me and my co-hosts. But nonetheless, make sure to go and support all of us down with links down in the description below. Please, please consider subscribing regardless of the team that you root for. Any support that you can give this channel and any support you're already giving this channel, regardless from how long you've been a watcher, is always greatly appreciated. So I thank you all for that. With all that being said, peace, love, and positivity to all you beautiful people out there, regardless to where you are in the world. Have a good rest of your day. I will see you in the next one, and bye-bye.